All right, here's a, a quick little video on uh, how to use git terminal commands if you're uh, still confused. I'm going to show you how to create a GitHub repository, how to download on your computer, and use the various commands to make changes and push them with your teammates and all that sort of thing. So let's go to GitHub. Uh, when you come to GitHub, you'll probably see a page like this. Go ahead and click New to create a new repository. We're going to give it a name. I'll just say Test Repo. Make it private, and then click Create Repository. Now, in order to get it on your computer, you're just going to copy this command right here and open up your terminal. If you're on Windows, you're going to want to download a program called Git Bash and use that as your terminal. If you're on Mac, you can just use the built-in one. <clears throat> type, so once you have a terminal ready, type in, uh, actually, we need, to, we need to find a location to place our folder. So I'm going to show you a, a few simple terminal commands. PWD is present working directory. It just shows you where you are. Right now, I'm in my user folder. LS is for list. It shows you what's inside of the directory. So I can see my various um, various folders and things. So we're going to put this on my desktop. So to do that, we say CD, that means change directory. And then we say desktop. If you press tab, it will autocomplete for you. So we're on my desktop. I can type LS to list what's on my desktop. Okay. Now we're going to take git clone and type in or paste in the uh, link that GitHub gave you. If you're using git bash, then you're going to want to right click and press paste. Go ahead and press enter. It'll say it's cloning the repo. It may ask you for your uh, computer's login password. Okay, so it says you appear to have cloned an empty repository. That's totally fine. Let's go find it. So it's right here. It's created this empty folder for us. Okay. Now, if we refresh this, it'll look the same because we haven't added any files yet. So let's go make some changes. We'll open up VS Code and click File, Open Folder, and we'll go locate the test repo. Great, so let's just put in a, a test Python file and we'll just say print hello world. Now, uh, this, this code that I've made is only on my local computer. It hasn't been pushed up to GitHub yet. Now, I'll show you how this works with this diagram. Um, and I'll try to send this out uh, in the in Slack so that you can see it as well. So there are essentially five steps of where your code can, uh, of, of five steps to push your code to and from uh, GitHub. And it's, it's easier than it looks, um, but this should help some. So right now we're on the working tree. That means we're working locally. Anything we do uh, has no effect on the GitHub online version whatsoever. The GitHub version is over here in pink, remote branch. Okay, so what we've uh, so when we did a Git clone, we pulled all the way from here to the working tree. So we've just made some changes, and over here, if you click on source control, it will show you how many changes you've made um, to your code. Okay, so back to the picture, we made some changes, so we need to push them to what's called the index or staging area. This essentially just prepares it to make a new version of the code, so to speak. So what we will do is run the git add command. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. Uh, for Mac and Windows, press control backtick to open a new terminal. If you're on Windows, it may say PS over here, and that means PowerShell. Um, you're going to want to click this drop down here and select git bash. On Mac, you shouldn't have to change it. So what we're going to do, it's uh, this terminal is already located. We're already sitting inside of our test repo folder. So let's type git status. Git status just shows the status of your code, uh, where it is along this pipeline. So right now it's untracked, meaning we haven't added it or prepared it for um, pushing yet. It's red. So let's type git add period. The period will just add any files in this folder that have been changed. Now, if we type git status, it's green. It says we haven't committed anything yet, but these changes are ready to be committed. So if we look at this, we've just added it and we're in this staging area, this index. Now we need to push it to our local branch. What this will do is essentially create a version of the code. Each time you create a commit, you're creating a new version of the code and you can see a history of all of the versions of your code. That's why we call, so, So now to get it to this blue local branch, we type git commit. And 
do space dash m. We're going to write a message which will essentially say it's a description, a short description of what this commit is. We're just going to say created test dot py. Make sure to close it with quotes and press enter. So you'll see one file was changed and um, now it has been committed. So if we press get status, it says um, nothing nothing to commit because we've already we've already committed. Um, however, we're still it's still not online yet. So if we go back to our picture, now we're here. We've committed it. So one last step, we need to push it all the way to the remote branch, which is the online version. So you say git push, press enter. And now it is online. So we can go to GitHub and refresh this page. And you'll see we have our test.py file. Okay. So let's say one of your teammates makes some changes to a file and you need to get those updates on your computer. Um, I'll show you how to do that. To simulate this, I'm going to edit this file online. This isn't usually recommended, but for the purposes of demonstration, it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> so I've just created a new commit that is sitting online, a new change, a new version. And if we go to the commits history over here, we can see the history. We created the test file, and then I just made a little change. However, on VS Code, I don't have that change yet. So what's happening is that change is sitting on the remote branch, but it's not in the working tree. So in order to get it to the working tree, we'll first type git fetch. And what this will do is it will fetch any updates from the server just so that our computer is aware of them. So if we type git status, it will say that our branch is one behind origin main. Origin just essentially means the remote branch. So we're behind by a commit and we need to update our local code. We can do this by typing git pull, and this will pull the updates down to our local tree. And you'll see that our code is immediately changed. So back to the diagram, we did our git fetch, which just told our computer, hey, there's some changes, just so you know. And then we said, okay, we want those changes, so we pull it all the way down. Awesome. So now what if your teammates want to edit this code? Let's see how we can do that. So on your repository, to add teammates uh, as collaborators to it, go to settings, collaborators, and click add people. Now you can either add their GitHub username or their email, and it will send them an email and they need to go to that email and accept the invite. Once they've done that, they'll have access to this. They'll be able to see this as well. And so let's say they want the code on their computer. Well, they do the same thing that we did at the beginning where we clone it. To do that here, you click on the green code button and it gives you this link. And you'll do the same thing where you say git clone, paste in the link, and you have the code. Now, the problem with multiple people working on the code is that if multiple people make a change and push it up to the server, it can have conflicts. If somebody changed a function and somebody else changed the same function, but they're different, that creates a problem. So what we need to do is create a branch. Now, currently we have one branch, meaning, uh, let me show you this real quick. Uh, you may, you'll probably not have this. This is just an extension I had on, on uh, VS Code. But this is our branch. It's going straight up. And so we have a, a very linear history. So if we want to have multiple people working on it, <clears throat> what we should do is create a different branch. We branch off and edit some code. And then when we're ready to push, we bring it back in. That way, if multiple people have branches, we can push them in at different times. And then we won't have conflicts with the code. So in order to create another branch, we're going to click here on main and just type the name of the branch. So my name's Taylor, um, so maybe I'll say Taylor. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, click here on create branch, and you see it says from main. That means it's copying the main branch where we started, and it's getting a clone of that. So now we want to be able to work on this branch on our local version. So in VS Code, down here in the very bottom left, you'll see it says main, and we need to, to get the other branch. So we're going to open our terminal, and we're going to say git fetch. This is going to let our computer know that, hey, there's another branch out there, just in case you want it. Okay, and it says new branch, Taylor. <clears throat> so in order to, um, to use that, we're going to use checkout. Checkout just means it's like you're checking out a book at the library. We're going to check out this code and return this other one. So we say git checkout Taylor. And so now it says branch Taylor set up to track origin Taylor. 
what that means is when we make changes here and we update it, it's going to update the online Taylor branch. So let's make a quick update. So print i um, Taylor. Okay. Oh. Okay. So we have um, this new change right here. And again, if we type get status, it's going to say that we need to add it. So we go through the same process. We say git add period git commit dash m and quotes and say add it Taylor. Let's enter. We've created the commit. Now we push it. And now it's um, now it's online, but it's not in the main branch. Let's go check it out. Refresh this, and it says, "Okay, we're on the Taylor branch. This branch is one commit ahead of main, so it's more recent, has more recent changes than the main branch, and we see it had uh, recent pushes less than a minute ago. So if we want to merge this code with our main branch, we click compare and pull request, and then." Right here, it says we're comparing the Taylor branch to the main branch, um, so we can just leave that the same, and we say create pull request. It's going to check if there's any conflicts with the merge. If there are, it will have you manually edit the code to fix the conflicts, or it'll have you decide if you want to keep your version or the online version of the file that has conflicts. Here, there are no conflicts, so we just say merge pull request and confirm. But let's look at uh, code here, and we see that we have our main branch, our Taylor branch, and now if we look in our git history, we can see that it added this um, this merge in. So let's look at this uh, visually. Um, I'm going to do a git fetch so that we know that the changes were made online. Okay. So now my graph shows something interesting. It says it shows that we were going straight up and then we branched out and made a change and we came back in. And that's essentially what we're doing is you make lots of branches, they make changes, they come back in, and ultimately all of the changes get put into the main branch. And uh, that's good. If you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out. I'd love to help in any way and uh, wish you luck.